Hey, what's up, y'all? Thanks for coming back for another episode of the Lawns Across America podcast. My name is Alan Hain. I go by the Lawn Care Nut online. And in this podcast, we're going to cover one of the most talked about subjects in all of lawn care, and it's really starting to ramp up here in the spring, and that is lawn leveling. Now, I've recently done a video on lawn leveling, and pretty much everybody else that has a lawn care YouTube channel has done their version of a video on how to level your lawn or how to flatten it out or how to get rid of bumps or how to get rid of ruts however many ways you want to say it, there's been a video done on it. But yet I still see people year after year after year looking for new solutions. So as I like to do, I'm going to try to get you to approach it in a different way. Let's back up. Let's look at the context and see if we can fish this out and get some of you to take action that maybe have been laying back looking for the perfect method, but really you're just not looking at it in the right way. With that, let's get into it. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about lawn leveling or lawn flattening, bumps in the lawn, ruts in the lawn. This has got to be one of the most talked about subjects of all DIY lawn care, and there are a million different ways to approach it. I've gotten some fresh questions about it recently because I made a video on YouTube where you can go and see it on the Lawn Care Nut channel where I talk about lawn leveling, but I kind of do like a small spot. I also talk about it with St. Augustine grass, which is different because typically if you're leveling an area, flattening it out, getting, you know, whatever you want to say, you're going to scalp the lawn first, right? Just get the grass out of the way so you can get the sand in there and rake it in and such. But with St. Augustine grass, you can't do that. If you've never felt St. Augustine grass before, you would know why. It's just stoloniferous. All the stolons are on top. They're they're thick as your as your pinky finger. They are crunchy. They are hard. And there are grass blades and crowns or crowns and grass blades growing out of those at nodes. And so if you go in there and scalp, you're going to literally just be chopping your your grass off at the ankles, literally. Uh, you're also allowing weeds to come in, so you can't scalp. But I thought I'd talk about, we'll get to the St. Augustine part in a minute, but let's just talk about this lawn leveling thought because people, you know, w- what will happen is you'll give them a, an idea and they'll say, well, I can't do that. My lawn is too big or I can't do that. I have too many bumps or uh, I need a better solution. Then even though there's like 10 different methods on YouTube, I still see people saying I need a better solution. So I think it's because you're approaching it wrong. So let's look at it this way first. Let's look at it from the uh, the approach of how is... The, how are the ruts or bumps or unevenness of the, of the lawn affecting your use of the lawn? So, for example, if you have a Kentucky bluegrass lawn that you want your kids to be able to run around on barefoot or put the sprinklers out in the summer and have the kids run through, right, that kind of stuff, the, the traditional, you know, American lawn, you know, we're going to run through the sprinklers while daddy fixes the Chrysler in the driveway, that kind of thing. There's probably a country song about that, I think. And um, if that's what you're looking for, that's a different use to the lawn than somebody who wants to set up a wiffle ball, um, you know, field in his backyard, play wiffle ball in the backyard, which there was a guy in our groups for a while that had like a real professional looking um, wiffle ball court. I mean, like big time. He's probably still in the group. Sorry, I don't remember your name, fella. But somebody will let me know who he is and I'll shout him out, put his link below. Um, when I was a kid, I had a buddy that had the wiffle ball on his side yard. And so, you know, again, a different use. And so what's the lawn use there and how would bumps or ruts affect that? Then there's like me, I'm just mowing my lawn. People don't, my lawn is not a playground, okay? The playground is up the street. For me, the lawn is for me to mow. It is for me to enjoy taking care of something that is alive, working through it. It's my hobby. It's my art. It's my creative outlet. That's what the lawn is and the landscape. Now, does that mean that I would tell the kids when we were younger, when they were younger, you can't play on it? No, but I would definitely limit the time. I would limit the areas. You know, we wouldn't, we would, we would work together on it. Again, there's a playground up the road. (laughs) So that's me, right? So I would ask first, and what is the primary use? And how is it affecting, how are these bumps and ruts affecting that use? Okay, that's number one consideration. You write that down, right? Just you write it down. So for me, I'm just a mowing only guy. If I had a lot of ruts and bumps, I'd be like, man, it, it affects me being able to enjoy the mow. In fact, the ruts are so bad, it gets to the point where I actually can't get a good cut. Now, if you have Bermuda grass, ruts are going to affect the quality of your cut more than if you have a, a very tall, um, turf-type tall fescue lawn, right? Because Bermuda, especially if you're real mowing it, you got to mow it low. Uh, it should be uh, real mode, obviously, but a lot of people aren't doing that. They, they need a rotary mow. So you cut into those legs, every rut and bump. We get that every year, actually. You know, people will send in pictures of their Bermuda grass and go, man, every time I cut, I have these like brown spots. Why is that? Well, that's because you're cutting into the legs. And uh, so you're, you're getting literal scalp spots. And Bermuda is very sensitive to that, whereas turf type tall fescue isn't. 
right? So this is a consideration that way. How are the ruts affecting my ability, number one, to enjoy the mow? You know, if you're on a riding mower, is it is it beating the crap out of you? Because that can happen. Uh, if you're on a push mower and you don't have self-propulsion, you know, hard is it harder to push the mower through? There's all of these things. And then secondly, does it affect the cut? Those are things right there that would be a no, non-starter for me. I don't care if the kids can play soccer on this thing. If it's going to make it so that I can't enjoy the mow, it's over from there. That's like a non-starter. I'm fixing that no matter what. In fact, at at no matter what cost, I'm fixing that because I need to enjoy the mow, right? You getting the idea of the thinking here? All right, the second is, is what's your budget and how long are you going to live in this house? You know, if you're in this house, you're like, yeah, this is our starter home. You know, it's a two-bedroom, one-bath. We're here because we have one child right now, but as our family grows, we're out. Well, that's going to affect how invasive you want to get, right, with your leveling or your flattening or your fixing versus if you're like, no, this is our dream home. This is our forever home we're in. Uh, well, Okay. Makes sense there. Uh, budget comes into that too, based on the size of the lawn, uh, equipment you may need to rent, that type of stuff. Um, and then physically, what are you willing to take on or how many friends do you have that may have some experience can help you? Because what I end up telling people, these people that will tell me every different method I recommend, well, look, here's a method that, that, that goes this way. Here's a, no, that doesn't work for me. My lawn is too big. All right. Well, here's a method that works this way. That doesn't work for me. Lawn, my lawn is too bumpy. All right. Well, here's a method. Those people that will tell you that none of those methods work. Okay. If you're that person, if you've just gone through all of that questioning there and, and you need to do something more invasive, I would say this. Number one, why don't you just consider starting over? Now, if you're going to be in the house for a year because it's a two-bedroom, one-bath and you got twins on the way, no. But if it's your forever home, okay, let's consider starting over because it's that bad, right? You've Every option I've given you to fix it without starting over, you've told me, no, that won't work. Okay. Then you have to start over. Well, my lawn is too big. I'm sorry, bro. Big, big lawn, big budget. You know what I'm saying? So all of these things come into consideration. And literally when you start over, I'm talking renting a Bobcat, scraping everything up and giving your, your property a fresh grade, right? Because a lawn should not be bumpy. It shouldn't be. It's, there's something has happened. Either it was not properly prepared, the ground was not properly prepared, which I've seen. Ultra out Illinois, so for better. When I, I listen, back when I worked over by the south side of Chicago, south, 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 hey, southwest suburbs, south suburbs. I'm talking Orland Park. You know, there's two sides to Orland. Tinley, when Tinley was growing, I was there. When Frankfurt was nothing but Frankfurt Square, I was there. And I saw that grow. I saw all these houses being built. And I would see that these subdivisions, they would put in these homes, bam, 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 all across, you know, these areas. And uh, I'm talking, this is like, um, uh, let's see, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, right in there. That's when I'm watching all, and, and anybody that's from that area knows that that was a booming time in Tinley Park, Orland, Frankfurt, Mokina, just booming with houses, right? Uh, lots of tri-level houses, <laughs> lots of bi-levels too. That's a big thing. It was about Wayne, Indiana. But I would see these subdivisions go in. It's all clay soil there, and clay soil is not bad. It's another thing. People love to hate their lawn soil. It's a terrible thing. You should love the soil you have. But uh, learn to love it. But, uh, you know, that's that clay soil, and it just looks cracked. You know, after you've had a house being stick built and all kinds of different things laid out in the lawn or on the dirt and blah, 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 you know, at the end of the day, they're, you know, they're trying to get these things up. It, it gets cold. Things are frozen. They don't always get a good, solid what I call finish grade. Sure, they get a grade that'll pass inspection, but a grade that passes inspection is more about water flow at that time. And um, boy, it's hard to anticipate how water is going to flow when something used to be a farm field and now it's a subdivision. I mean, I know there's a, you know, they have drainage ponds and everything else, but everybody's seen this, right? Water goes where it wants to go. So if, if, if they don't get a good finish grade, they just get enough to pass inspection. They got some swales in there, and then they just plop the lawn on top of this crusty, dry clay, which happens all the time. I've done videos on it way, way back. And, uh, you know, yeah, that's a problem. So it could be that your original land was not set up right, especially if you're in a subdivision that's been built in the last 20, 25 years, something like that, right? So that could be. I've seen that a lot. In that case, you're probably going to want to start over. Give that thing the grade it should have done. Give it a good finish grade. Maybe you need to install drainage because now the water has revealed where it's going to flow from a neighbor who's done something or, or something's backed up somewhere or a tree. I mean, who knows what has changed things in the last 20, 25 years in a subdivision. But now you know. So now you'll correct with drainage. You get, get the drain pipes. I'm telling you what, a lot more water comes off of your roof and down your drainage um, than you think. I mean, I, there's a way to do a calculation, I'm sure, but it's a lot of water that is caught on your roof, on your, you know, 2,500 square foot roof that is put down, what, like seven uh, drain drain spouts, 
to eight maybe. Anyway, you can see what I'm saying. That's a lot of water going into one spot, and that can cause issues. Now, the other thing is trees. Maybe you have large trees. Well, what's the what's the compromise there, right? I have tree roots. That's another one. Like, I have tree roots. Well, I mean, I have to be cold. Cut the tree down then. Rip it out. I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, trees are the natural enemy to lawns. So there's all of these considerations you have. But at the end of the day, if it is that bad, yeah, rent the bobcat. Get somebody that knows. Give yourself a fresh grade. Fix any problems that are there. And then resod or reseed. Resod will be best. Reseeding, you're going to have a lot of water problems that you can't have, especially if you're doing an entire lawn. Sodding, bam, plopped in. Root system gets in and holds quick. Idea being, if you're that person that you can't find any solutions, then you probably need to start over. And by the way, if you do it right, though, if you do it right at that time, you probably won't have to do it again. You have to think that land doesn't want to be bumpy in most of the country. Think about the Midwest. The Midwest is flat. The reason the, the I'm talking about from Wisconsin down into Illinois, into Iowa, Indiana, all of those areas over into to Michigan, uh, Ohio, these areas are flat. It's beautiful. You know why the sunsets are so beautiful in the Midwest? It's because you can see for miles. It's the same reason why they're beautiful in Florida, because it's flat. The land wants to be flat in these areas. So if you have a bumpy lawn, there's something else causing it because the cause gravity pulls everything flat, you know, in, in, including, you know, old people's chests. I'm talking about me, old men. You know, the gravity pulls us down. <laughs> you know, everything gets flat over time. And by the way, water washing over things also makes it flat. You know, think about why rocks get smooth in a stream. You know, water makes things flat. So if you have bumps, if you have something that isn't flat in that regard, again, you can keep a slope, but it'll be a flat slope. If you have that not happening, there's something causing that. There's something wrong. You know, something going on there. Now back to, so that's that's what I'm saying. Just, you might have to start over. And, and again, that's where all those considerations come back. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And one of the things I want you to take away from that is look at the different way that we approached the problem. This is one of those things that you can take this same set of thinking or this same process of thinking and you can apply this to other things in life you know when you have a bumpy lawn all you can maybe think about is how much it bothers you when you're mowing and that just that compounds the problem in your mind and you can't actually back up and look at a better solution all you want to do is charge at the problem well sand doesn't work and dirt doesn't work and that when really what you should back up and look at the context because maybe in the case of what I was talking about here in this particular analogy, maybe you're only going to be there for another two years and it really doesn't matter. Now the problem doesn't seem that bad. Or maybe this is for your forever home and you're going to be here for the next 30 to 40 years. And so you want to take care of it now and plow down those old oak trees, no matter what your wife says, and get those roots out of there so you can have that flat lawn for your grandkids to run on in a couple decades. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a way to look at things and you can solve problems like that at work. You can solve problems like that with relationships, everything else. And I hope that's some, th some of the things that you guys will get from this podcast every once in a while is just a way to look at things differently, to think a little bit differently, to address things differently. And hopefully that'll improve your life in some way other than just having a nice lawn. Hope you guys are having a great week wherever you are. We are almost to March and uh, very soon everybody's going to be enjoying the mow. My friends in the South are enjoying the mow here in Florida. We're going to be in the 80s today. Lots of beautiful sunshine. Spring break, a lot of you guys are going to be coming down here in the next few weeks. Spring break looks to be good this year. Most of the lawns will be recovered, so you won't have to look at all that frost damage we're dealing with. And uh, there you go. Enjoy Disney, my friends. 